Yo, 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 yo! What is going on, y'all? Happy Thursday, happy Thursday evening. Hope everyone's having a great day and a great week. It's almost Friday. If you're if you're W2ing, if you got the soul-sucking job, you're almost there, it's almost Friday. Um, if you're an entrepreneur, it's just any other day. So something vulnerable about me. Something that I'm really working on lately is my, not inability, but my, my block with receiving. And it wasn't apparent to me until the last few years. And I'm pulling back more layers about this ability to receive. And I'm becoming more and more comfortable receiving. I can receive anything now, um, especially in exchange for the value that I offer. I still struggle, and this came up for me today, with receiving for no reason. So if I don't see the connection, then I struggle with that. But I know and understand that there's perfect balance in the universe. There's a perfect energetic balance. So for me putting out value, it's not always going to come back to me in the same form, but all debts are paid off and there's perfect balance in, in the universe with, in terms of energy and what you add in terms of uh, impact and value to other people. So I'm working on that. I'm working very hard on it because I can give all day, but to receive something and if I just receive something, like there, there used to be this, this part of me that was like, okay, now you have to give them something in return. I have to give them value, like do something for them, offer them coaching, offer them training, offer them something. Um, and now I'm just learning to be thankful, grateful, and open to receiving because I, uh, I deserve to receive. I deserve to receive, especially with everything that I give in terms of value. So I appreciate that and I welcome that. So how do great ideas come about? And I told you guys I would share this because I've arrived at this, this, this place where I have this great idea about offering coaching to more people. And what basically what we're going to do is we're going to open up all of the coaching programs that I offer and they're going to be able to be surf, or to, to served and used via just message or just text. So if you do not like to talk on the phone, if you don't like one-on-one interaction, that's uncomfortable for you. You'd rather just text a message with somebody. Or maybe you just articulate your feelings better through text, through written stuff, which is absolutely normal. I get that. Um, or you just have a fear of that vulnerability and this would be the best way for you to get your foot in the door and actually get the help that you need, be able to receive that. So now all of my programs are all serviceable through just text message. So you can receive all the help you need and you never have to talk to anybody on a phone if you don't want to. Uh, and I'm going to be setting a uh, aside time and scheduling sessions so that those people who want to take advantage of this, and this can be on the free call that I, I offer, or this can be you know our, our actual programs, to set aside this time so that you have my undivided attention during that. And I'm not multitasking. I don't multitask well anyways, so I would never do that. It's where I can sit down and focus. And I wouldn't suggest this for everybody, for every coach, but I know I'm damn good at what I do, and I can connect with people via text. It doesn't have to be, there's a lot to be said for in-person or seeing somebody on video because you can pick up physiology, but I can pick up energy through text. I'm really good at that. So yeah, so don't, uh, someone messaged me while I'm doing that. So I'm really good at picking up on energy and picking up on context clues. I kind of like, I, I, I was telling my daughter last night, like she loves Sherlock Holmes. I was like, that's basically what I do all day is I look for patterns. I look for things in human behavior and the sources of those things so that we can go and fix them and reprogram them. So that's something uh, I, I'm offering now. And how that came about is a really cool story. So the other day, I was just thinking about how saturated online coaching is and how everybody's like doing the same shit with funnels and offers. And I was like, what is it? And I asked this question because that problem was there. So because of the problem, I asked a question and I said, what is it that people need that isn't being offered right now? What is groundbreaking? What is new? What is pioneer pioneering? Or as my man Stefan says, what is prophetic? What is prophetic in this industry? And I just left it at that. 
I threw that question out there into the universe and I just left it at that. Having set the intention that the answer is going to come to me at some point. And less than 24 hours later, that answer was there and it hit me. So I asked the question last night on Facebook. I said, would you be more or less likely to receive coaching if it was offered in just a text or message setting? And there's a lot of people who said, oh, I want in person like, and, and gave their reasons, which I completely understand. That's probably more aligned with the help that I want as well. But there were a lot of people who were like, more, tell me more, um, and, and explain their reasons to that. And there were even more layers to this that I didn't even see at the time, such as people's ability to articulate, such as uh, the, the benefit of people being able to go back and actually look at the text, look at the conversation and process it and reprocess it and unpack it. Very often when we get into coaching sessions, like it's so passionate, it's so deep, it's so intense that you, you, you're not writing things down always. So you, you miss some things or you forget about them, but having the ability to go back and to reread things, that's pretty powerful. So there's some unintended consequences of this and layers that I didn't even consider. And I think it's going to be something huge. Um, there's some people I've already seen that are kind of laughing at it and think it's ridiculous. Um, I don't fucking care. I know that this is something big and something that is needed and it's going to really bring the services forward for people who were maybe unwilling or uncomfortable receiving help uh, through the typical modalities. So it's just a way of expanding what we do to other people. And the fucking dinosaurs that are like, oh, that doesn't work, you have to do this, like, no, like, and I actually believe that this type of coaching, this type of service is actually gonna become more and more pronounced and common so this is kind of groundbreaking, but it, it's in anticipation of the way and the direction that technology is going to take things because very, very uh, little do we talk on the phone anymore. Yeah, I, I've heard that therapists are doing this and that there's apps and stuff where you can get like email support or tech support. So why not? Why not get on, on board with this? Like I said, very, it, it, it's not as frequent anymore that we actually pick up the telephone and we have conversations. But that doesn't mean that there's a lack of connection because there's it, it's text. Um, you know, before telephones, we wrote letters, and those letters could be extremely intimate and personal and have lots of context and energy and meaning behind them. And it can be the same thing with text message if used the right way. It can be the same thing with email if used the right way. Plus, did you have voice options? So if there's something that I need to deliver to a client through this in a voice message, I can do that as well. Um, I had a, a, one of these sessions the other day and I used voice message to uh, deliver a meditation that I wanted the person to do. So it, it's powerful, it's pioneering, like Stefan says, it's prophetic and it's amazing, but it came to me because I recognize the problem and for every problem, there's a question waiting to be asked. And for every question asked, there's an answer waiting to be revealed. This is Michael Beckwith's visioning. So through that, this answer was revealed. And when you get an idea like this, it's so important that you don't just sit on it, that you actually implement it. So I implemented it right away. And in the midst of this, this conversation thread on Facebook, I said, this is now, this is now applicable. I am applying this right now to my coaching. All of my um, my packages and all the offers that I make, it, they're all accessible through this. And if there's details and shit that I need to figure out, <laughs> you know, as we go, then I'll do that because action is everything. Do not get stuck in the process of thought because action is what drives clarity. Even the wrong action drives clarity better than no action. So take action. Um, if you want to bring ideas into the world, if you want to know what your next step is, get clear on what the problem is, get clear on what the issue is, and ask good questions of the universe and be open and willing to receive what the answer is to that. And when that is revealed to you, then there is an action waiting to, to, to be taken place or, or implemented or applied into the world and be the one that does that. Don't wait on it. I wasn't going to wait on this and let somebody else take this idea and start running with it. Do I think that other coaches uh, are going to be jumping in on this? Absolutely. We already do to some extent because a lot of us offer unlimited text or email support, but we still do our coaching sessions. But this is just a way to make it more comfortable and change the modality for people who are comfortable with this. So 
that's how you do it. So if there's something that is weighing on you right now and you're looking for a solution, ask the question of the universe, set the intention, be open to receiving the response or answer. Make sure you are taking time to tune in because it's in those times where we tune in that we get those downloads. Kyle Cease was talking the other day because he has this 100 day meditation challenge. And he said that like for the first half hour, 45 minutes of his meditation, it's all like garbage. It's all like filtering through stuff. And the real meat of what comes through, the the great ideas, the genius and all that comes like after the 45, after the 47 minute mark. So make sure you are setting aside that time and you are, are doing what puts you in that genius zone. For me, it's meditation. For me, it's listening to podcasts. It's working out in the gym, which I'm about to do right now. And it's taking showers. I get so many great ideas in the shower. And I usually have my phone there on the counter with me. So if I get one, I can write it down right away. And then I go about my business and I return to my genius zone. So that's how you do it. That's how you apply it. Um, if you have one of these instances or scenarios, I want to hear about it. Like uh, drop a, a comment in the comments here or send me a message and let me know what question you've asked and what's been revealed to you through this. Or let me know what problem it is and we can work through a question that we're going to ask and we'll both set our intention for having that answer to that revealed. And that's fucking powerful. So I love you guys. I'm going to work out. I'm going to lift some arms, um, train some buys and tries. And then we're going to the showcase for my daughter's school tonight. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye.